Welcome back. It's your best friends. It's Austin and it's Sean. What's up, Doug? Not a whole lot. Same old, same old. Uh, what did I do this week? Something good. Uh, hey, we saw each other. Yeah, we saw, we each, saw other each other. Week. We saw each other. We had dinner. We played some drums. Uh, we got a uh, another uh drumming audition coming up, so that's gonna yes. be exciting. Yeah. Uh, we oh, also I ate went... some tacos. We did eat some tacos. That was delicious. Um. I went rock climbing outside this weekend for the first time in like a minute, probably a year, to be honest. So that was where'd you go? Nice. Went to uh, Rumbling Bald, uh, which is over by Lake Lure in North Carolina. If you know where that is, I'm um, getting more okay. lost with yeah. more words you say. So I'm sure. Sure. Uh, Chimney Rock State Park. Does that ring any bells? Yeah, yeah, it's like right over lots there. Lots of I've been there. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's like right in that area. There's a big boulder field um, at that entrance and um at one of the entrances i don't know if there's multiple entrances i would imagine there are um but it was sick uh i got humbled oh, again yeah. because i forget how to climb outside sometimes so it was a good time perfect but, yep and saw some friends from school so that was good besides good. that Ooh, uh, that ties into my question i had for you that i oh, told amazing. you about off camera awesome i'm excited for it um so yeah that that was my week how was your week it was good I can't really remember what happened for some reason. Oh, it was good. I judged a like a drum, like a band competition. So that was awesome. It's always nice to do. Nice. Provide some feedback and yeah, it's a good time. And who then won? I have no idea who won. I can't. Okay. Fort Mill High School won. Oh, nice. Good yes. job, Fort Mill High School. Yeah, good job. If anyone from Fort Mill, if anyone here, from Fort Mill High School listens to this, they're pretty good. They had a pretty beefy book. Nice, good stuff. They played it well. Um, and then Sunday, I don't even know what I did on Sunday. I can't remember. Yeah, no idea. Probably went to the grocery store. Nice. And then the week started, and you know, you know how the week goes. I know how the week goes. Fulfilling, race. but you know, it's yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of like moving from one thing to the next. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, it was good though overall. Word. Every everyone has the flu right now, bro. Really, dude? My mom texted me. Everyone. Uh, I don't. Okay. So I don't want to. I don't want to put. I don't know if we have we talked about this on the podcast. I don't know. I don't want to put my tinfoil hat on, but every time that I've gotten the flu shot, I've gotten the flu. <laughs> but not every time. Every time that I no, not every time that I haven't gotten the flu shot, have I got the flu. Did that yeah. make sense? No, so, that makes sense. I don't know, man. <laughs> Is it because you, have to you say. normally get the flu shot in the worst time, in the worst flu years? Uh, it's possible. My guess is it's just the seasons where there's like, you know, I mean, it's like a guess. Right? Like there's usually multiple variations that are going on and they're usually yeah. trying to aim the flu shot to be, um, you know, for whatever flu strain strain they're expecting that season but yeah, sometimes that's my understanding miss. of it too um, i could be wrong so but... it could all just be um you know you know it just, that that was just the case but <laughs> bring your mind brother <laughs> <laughs> think big bro um, and the world is you know, we haven't talked about that in a while but the... Dude, we haven't reminded our viewers the I world know, is it's flat. Big. Guys. Our world is. Um, speaking of the flat world, I've heard a lot of other people say. <laughs> I've heard a lot of other people say that that same exact sentence, like, "Oh, well, I when I get the flu shot, I get the flu. When I don't get the flu shot, I don't get the flu." And it's like, I, I don't know. I do get the flu when I don't get the flu shot, but it's just like it's like a consistency thing, right? It's like every time I've gotten so, the flu shot, I've gotten. <clears throat> My understanding of that is that if you get the flu, even if you had the flu shot, your symptoms are probably going to be a lot less bad. That makes sense. Dude, this is interesting. Okay. There's a PubMed article that talks about this mega dose of vitamin D3 on the day that you get the flu. And it's a 50,000 IU dose, which is rather high. Yeah. And it says as a singular 50,000 IU dose we've seen in our clinic to completely wipe out the like influenza. The flu, not a cold, not like sniffly nose, but like true tested positive influenza in 48 to 72 hours. Damn. Says a lot. 
says a lot. I was actually just thinking, like, right as you were saying that, I was like, maybe, maybe I'll just go, like, if I start to feel sick, like, I'll just go straight to um, the Invigory and get a, <laughs> a mm. drip, like a, um, yeah, that's a good idea. Vitamin C and D, what do they all do? Um, I don't know. If they NAD did drip and stuff, vitamin D, that'd be great. That would be great. I've heard the NAD thing has to be like a, a course that you go over. Uh, like, it's like, it's like multiple you times do one that you go. And you do another. And they like increase the intensity each time because it's like really pretty intense. I heard that stuff was really good for COVID. Like if COVID was as I believe it, like as bad as it was in the beginning now, and I got it, I'd consider doing that because I think it yeah me does too. a lot for it. Um, but now yeah. I mean now it's just a cold pretty much. So yeah, um, thankfully. Yeah. Um. Anyway, oh here's my question. All right. Yeah. Here's me. my question for you. So I was just thinking about like friends and it's a good show. The seasons. <laughs> You're funny. And the Thanks. like seasons of like friendships that I've had over mm-hmm. my course of my life. And I I don't know if this is a character flaw or if this is correct or if this is serving me or not serving me. So I just wanted I just wanted to hear your thoughts on it. Pretty much everyone I knew from high school, if I if I contact them at all, they're an acquaintance at best. And this has been the case for a long time now, like pretty much right when I graduated high school, just dropped every single friend I had, except for the exception of, I guess, one person. And then when I left college, same thing happened. Like I dropped every single friend that I had from college, like completely. And I'll talk with some of them every now and then, like, hey, like life update, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> but very much just once I left, I just like left the college friends behind. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or if it's serving me or not. But I think if I had to like, think through it and rationalize it. Um, I'm like on to the next in more than one way. And this is not against anybody or anything or anyone I was friends with in college or high school, but yeah, I got my mom to the next thing. Like I leveled up and it's not that ending graduating college means I leveled up, but it just happens to correspond with the same time. Because it's like you have to take on more responsibility and be more of a adult or be more of a man or whatever. And I don't think I don't think always that people do that. I think they like to stay stuck, or they don't like to stay stuck, but they stay stuck in what they had. I don't yeah, know. I think um, people make friends in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> I had a friend in college who. So like when I first got to school and I met this dude, he's a really great dude. And he's still like one of my closer friends today. Um, I'll call him like probably once a week and we'll just chat about random shit. Um, at the beginning of school, I noticed that like when he came to college, he went to school like pretty close to Clemson. So like a lot of his friends from high school ended up going to Clemson and he had like quantity and not quality as it comes to like friends so like it felt like he knew everybody on campus but like it felt like after getting like a few months of getting to know him he hasn't really had deep connections and i don't know if it's a i don't know if it's a value thing or if it's just like a product of like insecurity or what i don't know there there could be a lot of variables to that but i think i think me and you are pretty similar in the sense that like we typically go for some pretty deep connections whenever we make friends and whenever we bring friends along with us to the next chapter in our life it's because that path is like it's still going right like for example like in high school I didn't have that many friends to be honest like you could say that a lot of the like people that I knew in band were like my friends and I was friendly with them and I was you know I knew a lot about them but then pretty much pretty much the same thing for me is like right when I graduated it was like radio silence like I don't catch up with them they don't catch up with me and it's just because our path is not we're not on the same journey but there's like i can count on one hand the amount of people i talked to that i went to high school with um and they're like they're still with me 
we're still benefiting each other to this day. Um, so that was my next question. Okay. I, I do believe that every relationship has to be transactional in a sense that both parties are being added to throughout the friendship and the different phases and chapters of your life, different people might not be able to add to you anymore. And it's not because you're above them. It's because you're on a different fork now. Yeah. And the things that you need on this fork are not things that they can offer. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I would just say, I do think, I do think this should be transactional though. No, I agree with you. There's, there's a level of that. Like there needs to be a benefit on both parties, like being friends with one another. Um, And I think like, you being in that situation, I don't think it's a negative. I don't think it's a negative thing because I think it's a product of you wanting to forge strong bonds with people and also you being present in whatever's happening right now rather than focusing on like, I need to keep up with this one person because I need to keep up with this one person rather than I need to keep up with this one person for a better reason. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people like try to actively keep up with certain people just because they feel like it's the right thing to do. But if, you know, you're slowly drifting in different directions with different goals and different friend groups and, you know, whatever it may be. You know, just let it happen. Yeah, just let it happen. And it's okay to be friendly with them in the future and, like, reach out to them in the future. But, like, I don't see a reason to stress about it, I guess. So. No, I agree. If Yeah, if the – you you gave a timeline example. You're, you and your friend have a phone call about once a week. Just talk. If that turns into once every two weeks, I don't think you should feel guilty about that. You arrived there together for a reason. Yep. That could be a myriad of reasons. One of those reasons could be you're literally just busy and it wasn't on your mind, but that's an indicator that maybe you guys are splitting ways. Yeah. And that can be a slow process or it can be a quick process like leaving college and dropping all your friends or leaving high school and dropping all your friends. Yeah. I've definitely never wanted to be the quantity person in terms of closeness or relative closeness. Yeah, it just friends. didn't it didn't seem like it uh I never really met somebody with that like very obvious of a mentality. So like when I met my friend who was like that was very much his jam, I could tell it caused him a lot of social anxiety cuz it felt like he didn't mm -hmm. have people he could go to about like serious things but it felt like he had like a bunch of different friend groups that he was a part of reacted in a particular way with those friend groups and then if there's some stress mm. that happened, he didn't have like his support system you know what i mean yeah like you can have friends and people that your friend like like marching with a group is an example of this like i would you know consider th those people in that moment like my team my support system they're very close to me yeah and i get like you know i get to know them and then there are people I marched with five years ago that I haven't talked to in five years. You know what I mean? And I think that's just, you know, it just, it is what it is. Yeah. I At that time in, we shared in that the same particular way, interest course. and we were transactional in that shared interest. And then after that interest, you know, dissipated, aged out, decided to go to a different activity, you know, it just kind of fizzled. So, yeah, no, I agree. Well, it's glad to hear your <laughs> thoughts on that. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's, it's deep. It is deep. I was trying not to say too much just because I want to hear what you had to say, but I spoke a lot at the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think everything should be, you should be able to see the value add. And the value add can be, I'm chilling, and this person is really good at chilling. And yeah. I suck at chilling. Like, like, like transactional I suck at chilling. doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, I feel like transactional could come off as like hustle culture. Like I only I'm friends with people who I do business yeah. with, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, but it's very That's much important like, too, but no. Well, sure. But like, I, you know, have friends that are just like, they're good listeners and I'm good yeah. at listening yeah. to them. You know what I mean? And I can go to them about whatever it is. And that's, that's the transactional element to it. And you just, like you said, chilling, I can just hang out with this person and it's always a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Me by myself. I'm just not, I'm not very good at chilling. Yeah, I need I need someone to fucking help me. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah.
So sometimes that's right. Seriously. Um. Anyway. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Sick. You got oh an article? God. Actually. Oh. It's is getting he tired. It's getting. <laughs> It's getting late, and I'm really looking at my screen, so I'm just going to pop on these bad boys right here. Oh, Ooh. man. Ooh. Wait. Right. Are those blue blocking glasses? Austin. These are blue blocking <laughs> glasses. I had to cough. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in my throat today. But yes, these are blue blocking glasses, and we are affiliated by True Dark. Uh, and they provide blue light blocking glasses of varying strengths, including these. These are the um, True Dark Twilights, if you're interested in those. We have a link in the description. Uh, if you want to get better sleep at night, if you look at your phone right before bed and you're like staying up in your bed, you know, an hour past that point, and you're like, man, I just can't get to sleep or I just can't stay to sleep. You should get some blue blocking glasses from True Dark. Mm, I agree. Yes. Blue light can mess up your circadian rhythm. I'm going to switch to my lighter blue blockers uh, Dude, I don't because I don't want to get sleepy scrub. in the middle of my, in the middle of the podcast. But um, if you're somebody who looks at your screen, you're uh, being exposed to blue light and blue light can uh, mess with your melatonin production, which is going to allow you to get to sleep sooner. So that's why when the sun is up, we are so awake and the sun goes down and we're not looking at screens, we get so sleepy. But if we're looking at screens, that's going to disrupt our circadian rhythm and our melatonin production. So get some blue light blocking glasses, put them on your face. Two hours before bedtime, you'll sleep like a baby. Oh, I got mine, bro. Nice. Those The, the blue light binoculars. <laughs> yeah, they're not really blocking much blue light right now. But No, good. not really. Not really. That's the thumbnail. You know, if you close it, then <laughs> you're blocking all light. So... <laughs> You're still good. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever want to not, uh, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to break the bank. Just do this right before yes. bed for like two hours. There you go. We got a link in the description good. for that too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's actually just a Venmo account. And if you could Venmo us $5, yes. then you can do yes. this whenever you want. But if you, you want. don't, you can't. Yeah. And we'll come after you. And we'll no longer Sue be for $5. Your best friends. <laughs> You'll maximum be your best acquaintance. Yeah, exactly. Maximum. All right. Yeah. Go check out the link in the description. It's the good stuff. All right. Okay. And I do have an article. So let's check hey. it out. What's your article looking like? <laughs> Whoa. Would you look at that? You're home for private music lessons. It's cloudmusicsuite.com. If you're interested in uh, getting private music lessons yeah. uh, from the comfort of your home, go to cloudmusicsuite.com and check out our world-class instructors. If your Love coworkers it. are quiet quitting, here's what that means. Mm. Some Gen Z professionals are saying no to hustle culture. I'm not going to go extra. I'm not going to go no. extra. This is a long article. Um, are you familiar with the term quiet quitting? I am. And funny story for people who aren't patreon uh what are they called patrons excuse me patrons uh for people who aren't patrons <laughs> on the your best friends patreon they won't know this because the exclusive content that you see on there would have shown you this in the pre-show party but sean said something about working he's making a joke and i was like yeah dude that doesn't really happen much these days from some people and then he was like yeah and i was like that's like that quiet quitting thing and he was like Dude, no way. <laughs> Come on. Because <laughs> I didn't know that this was going to be his article. I was like, damn it. Wow. What are the odds? Or go to the uh, link in the description, get that Patreon, become a your best friend, your best buddy, old pal, yes, your best yes. queens. Okay. We had some good conversation in the pre show party today. Uh, all right. So, quiet quitting uh, is something that I kept hearing on like social media. And then today, for some reason, I had this thought. I was like, I should probably know what this means. And maybe it's something we could talk about on the podcast because, <laughs> like, I never really like, <laughs> learned what it is. But let's go into it. So, not taking your job too seriously has a new name quiet quitting. The phrase is generating millions of views on TikTok as some young professionals reject the idea of going above and beyond in their careers, labeling their lesser enthusiasm a form of quitting. It isn't about getting off the company payroll, these employees say. In fact, the idea is to stay on it, but focus your time on the things to you do outside of the office. Uh, videos range from sincere ruminations on work-life balance to snarky jokes. Some set firm boundaries against overtime in favor of family. Others advocate coasting from nine to five, doing just enough to get by many want 
to untether their careers from their identities. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on uh, in this article. It's actually a pretty long article um, and probably the best website we've looked at, but we'll get to the rating later. Yeah, we'll um, get to the rating later. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know what 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 are your thoughts on quiet quitting? You got you got opinions, thoughts? Yeah, I do have some thoughts and some opinions. Uh, my first thought or opinion is that it said that you know a lot of people want to uh, I don't know what the exact word was, but disconnect their identity. Oh, untether. There we go. Untether, Many may want yeah. to untether their careers from their identities. I think oftentimes that's because they hate what they do. If you hate what you do, you shouldn't do it. So you should actually quit. You shouldn't quiet quit. If you quiet quit while you're looking for a new job so that you can quit and leave that career and leave that line of business forever, I think that'd be a good thing. But I think if you can't tether your identity to what you do or you feel uneasy tethering your identity to what you do for work, I think you just don't like what you do that much. It's not sustainable for you. <clears throat> in anyway. some way shape or form i mean like i think i think it's okay to do something that you know is not my, and i you know you would agree with this but like the final destination right like the idea of what a career used to be is different from what it is now and i think it's more okay for people to like pivot to a different career and I yeah think- i'm not saying like i'm not saying people can't work jobs or shouldn't work jobs because i'm just i'm just stating that if you're worried about tethering your identity to your career, you probably don't like it. Yeah. I'm not saying you have, you know, I'm not saying that you can't work a job that you don't like. A lot of people do that. And it's sometimes it's for, you know, that's the only way they feel as though they can provide what they need to provide for the people they need to provide for. Right. Yeah. That is what it is. That's, that's the situation they put themselves in or that they would feel like they found themselves in, but really they put themselves in it. But anyway, um, I don't like it. I don't like the idea of this. I think this is a a product of a lot of useless jobs being made anyway. I think most jobs achieve close to nothing. Um, I'm not going to name specific jobs or careers that I think achieve next to nothing, but there's a lot that I don't think really contribute to the world. And there's a lot of things in not just a capitalist society, but all societies that are needed in quotes to be player in society and adhere to these certain things and in order to do those things someone has to set that up someone has to manage that and i think those jobs where the activities that you force other people to do that don't add anything to society extra extra don't add anything to society the jobs themselves so yeah i understand why people do it because like there's no real purpose in a lot of jobs that said if you want to be an achiever you can't be fucking doing this yeah i mean it's it's a um it's a product in my opinion at least it's a product of like a lot of other bigger issues right like we've talked about parkinson's law on this podcast before a couple of times yeah like it's very much just like a product of like an expectation that you're in the office doing things rather than the expectation being like you're getting these particular things done and if the expectation was getting these particular things done uh, this this wouldn't be a fad you know what i mean because people would just be getting those things done and then their job and they would just leave um and if that was the case that world that would exist would just be less hours in general and more time for other things um yeah so yeah i don't know i think it's just i think it's just a product of like weird broken like focus on time over output and stuff like that yeah i agree though i agree yeah time-centric things are always always have been frustrating to me yeah um and something else on said, this oh go ahead oh sorry I, I was just gonna say focusing on the things you do outside of the office are very very important yes 100%. not i'm not saying like personal life things those are important as well but i'm just we're just talking about a career being able to focus on things outside of the office are always going to enhance your career. And that can be professional development. That can be personal development. That can be being able to make sure that you have worked out enough so that you don't feel like shit and get sick all the time and get overweight and have all these aches and pains. 
Yeah. And, or, yes. And these things probably are going to lead to you being more effective at work. If you're choosing to stay in the same job, if you are making an exit strategy, which I think most people, well, maybe not most people, certain certain personalities of people should do. I think everyone uh, that is of a certain personality type and has certain goals should should try to work a job for like 10 to 12 years. Make the money that you can make, enjoy the job while you do it, and then do all the other things that is your exit strategy during those 10 to 12 years and then exit. Yeah. You know, execute the exit strategy. Build that up. Build up something that you can rely yeah. on outside of yeah. that yeah. standard career. Or else you're going to get burnt the fuck out. That's for damn sure. So, yeah. It's like, I get it. My my final thoughts are, I get it. I don't love the idea of it, but I get it in the context of how work exists <laughs> in this world, yeah. or at least in the United States. Certain jobs, though, if you're doing this, this could be extremely... Like, if, a, if this became, like, a thing, which it seems like it is, this could be very damaging to American society. Yeah. Like, I could say that. You know, I'm a teacher. If we just did nothing every day, like that's that's damaging to American yeah, society. Right. Yeah, that that's a good point. Like, I mean, if there's, you know, if you're sitting at a desk job and you're expected to just like sit there, and it's just like you start to, and you're like spending so much time sitting in like meetings and doing a bunch of like useless stuff, and then you boil that down into like, okay, they, like I'm just gonna do the job and then leave like i think that's a better thing than like you know if a teacher decides like well i'm just going to do the bare minimum of my job and then leave and so yeah like, or a nurse yeah or yeah or a, or a police officer or whatever it may be like yeah. those are all not or a doctor <laughs> like a surgeon right yeah it's not learning the new the new strategies it's not taking the time to read the latest research yeah um a physical therapist who is like doing certain practices they've done for 30 years that are actually making their patients worse. Right. You know, doctors who are prescribing medicines for things they don't have a basis to prescribe medicines on. Yeah. Like, like, like prescribing antibiotics when you haven't done a test to see if there's even a bacterial infection at all, stuff like that. You know, that, that is very damaging to society. 100%. I'm not saying those people are quiet quitting, you know, but if they did, these things would probably happen. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. Let's write this website yeah. real quick. Uh, sixth. Oh, I like the top a lot. I like the top a lot too. I'd give it a That's seven. Awesome. Two, two of the same ad right in the middle. Three of the same oh, ad. No, all right, six. <laughs> I think six. Six. Just so good. not effective. Yeah, that's true. At least it's there's not the like a the bunch of yeah, that's true. ads, and like down here, like the suggestions aren't horribly. They're not offensive. Yeah, exactly. Conversations. This reminds me of a choice I made in my early 30s. I was working in an elite boutique law firm as an associate in San Francisco. That's not the same as one of the big firms, but by most measures, a demanding high pressure job. My wife was very ill. Oh my God. Almost died on more than one occasion. I suffered a severe injury that would cause, in, injury that would cause chronic pain for almost 20 years. And I felt, okay, this doesn't sound like quiet quitting. This sounds like you were in a dire situation and your workplace should have been like, understanding way of what's happening yeah yeah way more understanding <clears throat> yikes well that was one of the messages on this uh this here article yeah that was not my story should have specified, uh, on the, <laughs> yeah austin's not telling his own personal story um no. on the other side of the coin have you heard what uh virtual software engineers have started doing no uh work wait 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 i think i have two jobs multiple like not even just two yeah. jobs like getting like yeah. full-time six-figure salary jobs with other companies and like doing like the bare minimum of like five different software engineering jobs and not letting them know that they already have a job and making bank that's so unfortunate <laughs> That that is happening because it's gonna ruin it for all the virtual employees. Yeah, that's not good. Wow. Not good. Although, if you want to talk about an exit strategy, that's hilarious and <laughs> awesome. <Right? laughs> Isn't that dope? 
One year of I that. Love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. One year of that, Dude. you're sitting pretty. Exactly. Or I mean, yeah, do three the or four and, and then <laughs> invest like 95% of what you're making. It's just like, good God. Dude, that'd it's be not so like you're cool. traveling anywhere. You just have no car. Like you, so could, you could go, you could go dumb, stupid with that. Like, oh my god, that'd be so funny. God damn, you could retire in two years. Imagine the stress, <laughs> though. Ooh, we should talk about. I should. I'm gonna do this on my personal channel, but work. the savings rate you need in order to retire in a certain amount of years. We should do that on this channel. Basically, if you are saving 100% of your income you can retire in zero years and if you are saving 95% you can retire in like three years and if you're saving like 90% you can retire in like five years and if you're saving like you know 80% you can retire in like seven years it is it was it was whenever I read that I don't know three years ago or something this is a guy named Mr. Money Mustache and the first, the first thing I noticed was, here, you tell me, what is the standard, like, you have to invest this percentage of your income? <clears throat> what do you, what really? Do you, if you, it's really small. <clears throat> well, what, like, what would you say a number that you've heard is? Where it's like, well, no matter what, you got to do blah. What, what would you say? Like 10%. Yeah, I've heard like 10% and I've heard 15%. Yeah. My personal opinion is that that is way too little. And we've talked about this before, you know, off camera and probably on camera before too, but I don't think that's the best for like a lot of reasons. I would say bare minimum should be 20%. And that's a low, 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 like low. Well, I think it's because... 50% ideal. How much? 50% Fifty percent is oh, ideal. Yes, that is definitely ideal. So, and then um, if you can get more percentage on top of that, keep going. I think it's because people. It's definitely want possible. To disconnect. Dude. They want to disconnect that um, savings from investing, and I think that's the issue. That's what it comes down to. Is like I feel like I need to save to get to retirement and to reach these financial goals, and then also I should be investing. I I think they in my opinion at least like it should be looked at as the same thing i like i think it's okay i think it's okay and good and necessary to save money like outside of the market to a particular extent but i think that's can be way less of a percentage than people think it needs to be because i think you can do you can have your money in very safe investment options that's still making you money and can still be safe you know what i mean and savings yeah yeah um, at least that's my view on it. No, that's my view as well. And I don't, yeah, I don't like say, oh, I'm going to invest exactly this percentage. I'm, I'm going to save exactly this percentage. If I have a savings goal in that moment, I'm going to save more money than I would ordinarily. And that technically can cut into my investments because I have a minimum amount of money that I'm putting into each one of my investment accounts. And then all of the money past that is you know, if I don't have a savings goal or I don't have anywhere else that I need to put the money, then it goes in the market. And we've talked about that with like bonuses and stuff like that. So that allows me to be in a situation where if I'm putting the this dollar amount, this dollar amount, this dollar amount into the different accounts, and then I get a bonus, 100% of that can go into saving and investing. Like I don't need it. Why do I need it right now? Like I'm in my 20s. Yeah, like, if you've learned, if money. you've learned to live, on a particular rate and then you get a raise like I, don't I guess the, increase your living style don't increase your living style the only way where, place where i would say that like that's maybe impossible is if you're like you know living in an apartment and rent is rising and stuff like that so you mm-hmm. might have to like increase a little bit but like it shouldn't be that much i mean no hopefully not if it does and move out go yeah, somewhere you else. gotta find something else but yeah, if you've learned to live a particular way on a particular rate, why increase it when you get a raise? That raise can just go into making you more money. Yeah, and then that money is going to make you more money. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Dude, the percentage of people who are trying to 
become rich from stocks is so fucking low. It's so fucking low. And the the percentage of people who are trying to do it on an accelerated rate is like one one hundredth of that. Yeah. Most of the people I know personally have very little to zero, somewhere between very little to zero invested. Same. That is so crazy. And it, you you can't, this is, this is like anything. Whenever you're an acquaintance with someone or even you're a friend with someone and it's not like a, a hierarchical type situation, and what I mean by that is if you, okay, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I think it's very important to hire people so that you can get information from them. For example, I, I, I teach people. I teach people how to play drums. And I teach people how to do other things. And I you know, have a business that we own together. I run my own tutoring service. I run my own private lessons service. So constantly in like the pitches and getting people to basically getting people to hire me uh, for my services. I judge, you know, who gets me these judging jobs? Nobody. I do. You know, I, I'm marketing myself. So I have these sets of skills. Of course, I have the sets of skills of teaching people. I can help people teach other people. And then I can literally teach the thing. If someone wants to learn something about drums, I will have conversations without them paying me about drums. Maybe they're playing something and they ask me a question about it. My answer is not nearly as detailed as it would be if they were paying me, right? I would just yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, just like turn your wrist for a drum example. Uh, or if it was like a teaching question, so I was like, oh, what's like top three teaching tips? I'd be like, yeah, this is that. That's my opinion. And I don't think I do that on purpose. I think I do that because I know that the message is not going to be received as well because the relationship is not set where it's like, okay, I know that you know either a lot more or slightly more than me about this very specific thing. And I want you to tell me those things and I'm going to receive whatever you tell me. Whenever you're paying someone for that and you hire them and you're like, look, you're the expert in this situation and I am the trainee or whatever in this situation, then the messages get across way easier. And it's a lot smoother for me to be able to help someone and like give them information. This is like a diet. If someone hired me to do their diet, they would be able to change their body composition and they would be able to live a better life and feel better on a regular basis. That's my true belief. But the conversations I have with people about diet are dead end. That's why I stopped having them. I don't care. I don't, I don't talk about it much at all. I just do my thing. I eat how I want to eat and I don't really explain myself to anyone. Because they're so dead end. Even if someone seems like they're interested in what I'm saying, and I'm like, oh, okay, this person's interested. So I start to talk about it, and then it's like dead end. I'm like, all right, well, that was a fucking waste of time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's but, like you're setting the um, the relationship between teacher and student, and you're also like... Yeah. It's kind of like the transactional thing we were talking about earlier with like friends and stuff. It's like, I feel like you're much more invested to be like... I want to make this person successful in the thing. And I know that yes. they want to be successful in this thing. Yeah. So I'm going to give them a hundred percent of my thoughts and opinions and well, well thought out thoughts and opinions. Yeah. Um, and I have standards for how they're going to, how they're going to act in the situation. And they have standards for how I'm going to act in the situation rather yeah. than it just being like a meandering conversation. Right. And and my, my standards are that they're going to ask me some heavy hitting questions and I'm going to give them some fucking best answers I can possibly give them and they're going to listen intently right and yeah. their standards are that I'm going to give them my best and I'm going to not hold back information I'm not going to gatekeep because you know they're hiring me for my time like if I had the option to if I was fucking big ball and you know I had the option to have lunch with Jeff Bezos and I had to pay him for it or I get to talk to Jeff Bezos not over lunch and it's up to me how long the conversation is. I'm not going to pay him for it. And he knows that I'm just some dude. 
I would definitely pay for it if I was in a position to do that. And I know for a fact I'll get way more out of it if I paid for it. The versus I saw I'm at some party or something, and I'm like, "Hey, what's up? My name's so and so." He's gonna be like, "Cool, what's up, man?" Yeah, he's not. A, he's not in the zone. He's not in out. teaching he's like, zone. Yeah, he's like, "What's up, dog? How you doing? Want to play some cards?" You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're like, "Yes, I want to play cards. I'm gonna learn so much." And then he's like, "Ace." <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, just, he's just being a human being. You're just like, "Wow." <laughs> Damn, that's Jeff Bezos. That's just Bezos, bro. <laughs> Do you think um, people are too afraid to talk about money? Yeah. I just feel like money, especially when like we were younger, like I feel like our parents like probably didn't talk to neighbors or friends about money at all. Like nobody had any idea what kind of money somebody else made or what kind of strategies they had to continue to make more money or what they did on the side. And it's like, I feel like I have a lot of friends that I talk to about money. And then I have a lot of friends that I try to talk to about money and they get like a little like weird about it. And I feel like I see normal, like, uh, like other people's just like normal interactions. And it just seems like money seems like this like tiptoey thing. And I don't know. I'm of two minds about this. Um, um, I, there's two things I don't like to tell people. I don't like to tell people what my net worth is. And I don't like to tell people how much I make after taxes. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, one of the reasons is because of the profession I'm in and how like personal it is and how, how many times things could be brought up if I did reveal anything. And I feel like it would just turn into like a distraction because I guess I'll just elude to the fact that I teach and that's not the majority of the money I make. So if you want to do math, you can do math, but that's all I'll say. And I just don't like, I get worried that it's going to be used as something against me. And I don't like that. So it's like, is, is someone else going to feel some type of way who also works the same day job? Or are they going to ask me a bunch of questions? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Do I even want to answer those questions? Do they even want to know the answers to those questions? Um, you know, or a student sure. like knowing something and it's like, Oh, well, my, dad makes this much but you're like some random teacher and you make that much it's like well could we could have a long conversation about this or and then two things could happen one you learn a lot two you go home and tell your dad and he's offended <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> you know what i'm true. saying like that's true that it's sense. like especially when you're working I don't with know. kids that could be tricky yeah so i get worried about that thing and then i get worried about the the net worth piece as well just because of like i don't i don't want to become like a target for negativity or i don't i also want to be able to become a target for like you know either end of the spectrum let's just act for a second like i have a negative net worth i wouldn't want someone to think of me negatively because i have negative net worth meaning more debt than than assets that would be an unfortunate situation for someone to judge me based on that. I think it's also an unfortunate situation for someone to put you on a pedestal if you have a large net worth in comparison to your age group on average, because now you're seen as like, I don't know, the money guy or, or whatever, you know? And it's like, Oh, well you got money like that. So why, why are you driving the car you're driving? Why are you doing what like, why are you working the job you're working? I'm like, Cause I'm fucking doing what I want to do. <laughs> but don't you think? Because I've figured out a system that works for me. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. If it didn't work, I would fucking stop doing what I'm doing. I mean, just a thought experiment. I know this is not even close to like reality. But like, if everybody talked about money completely openly, do you think those problems and thoughts would still would exist? You know what I mean? Like, 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 let's say everybody's net worth and salary was just like above their head when they walk around. Would that 
regularity of like knowing that detail about anybody and everybody that you talk to do you think that would get in the way of like would you put that person on a pedestal more so or less so than now where people are very uncomfortable talking about finances period yeah i don't know that's a good question and i want to think about either. it because you asked it was a thought experiment and i'm trying to formulate an answer but i'm, I'm thinking through it me. as i'm asking you like i don't i don't even know either i guess you could say that like it would at that point it would kind of fall under the same category as like um uh like a physical attraction almost yeah and people get put on the pedestal for that all the time too like oh that person's got you know good jeans good shoulders or you know very pretty eyes whatever it may be so i guess you oh thanks that, which, thanks yeah you, had, you the I most beautiful eyes. eyes thank you <laughs> oh and but, i have huge shoulders <laughs> they're just massive dude and um but so yeah there's that part of it too where it was just, it would just i could see that being an argument for why it would continue to be like oh this person is like way better than me but yeah i think it's extremely important i don't know man i think money is extremely important but i also think it's important for who you share what you have with and your level of comfort of who's going to ask you questions and who's going to potentially want your help right so you know i don't i know that not all people are asked like Hey, I'm about to start a company. Do you want to invest in this company? Would you put up capital to invest in this company that I'm about to start? Not everyone gets asked that question. So somehow, some way, I I revealed something that made them feel as though I'm in a capital position to invest in their personal company. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get, I get what you get. And and that's that's with me not like that's with me consciously thinking I don't want to put myself in that situation yes opportunities can come to me that way but uh, i don't want i don't want everyone i don't want every opportunity presented to me yeah, and then opposite situation maybe i'm the worst possible person to th that for that opportunity to be presented to and i i would be a horrible business partner maybe and i'm un untrustworthy with my money and now you know I that's don't a good know. point if you had like a negative net worth and like people knew that and you had to go ask somebody to finance your company, you're probably not looking good. You know yeah. I mean? They're going to be like, you don't know how to handle your debts. And it's yeah. like, well, you, but you don't know the story, but they don't want to know the story. They just hear a number, they just see the number. you know? Yeah. Oh, well oh, you have fair. a, you have a negative, you have negative $20,000 to your name. Well, you're a, you're a schmuck. Maybe that person is not a schmuck though. Oh, yeah. well you're this age and you have a half a million net worth. You're a you're a genius. Maybe they're like super not a genius. You know, maybe they got lucky. Sure. Maybe sure. you know, maybe they bought Bitcoin in 2008 or some stupid shit. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I just get those are the two things that I don't like to reveal. So you said you have two opinions about it, right? Or you have two two minds about it. So you said that you don't like to share those things. What's the other side of the coin? Oh, the other one is that I think it's very important to talk about strategies. Oh, okay. So like. If if someone was was to ask me like, well, how do you make money? My, you know, if they just ask me that general question, they know nothing about me. I would answer, um, kind of silly. Like, I'll be like, well, I have like a job, job, and then I have like job, job, jobs. You know, what I'm saying like <laughs> job, jobs, and then there's like this job that's like a a real job, and then this one that other people call a real job, but I think it's like more like a fake job. Anyway. So I would like go into that and then how I, how my mindset is about like making money and how important the extra dollar that you can make is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also think it's important to talk about what you do with your money after you make it, you know, what happens right, right when you get paid, what's your general allocation plan? Is there an allocation plan? I think that's super, super important. And when you talk in terms of, somewhat vague percentages it's more applicable to everyone and i think it's more valuable to more people if you're able to put percentages on percentages on things excuse me so yeah i think it's important to talk about strategies and that's what's going to move people to the next but like for someone to 
like, you know, this is a big thing on YouTube. Someone who has supposed millionaire status using that millionaire status to basically say that they're a, an authority on some kind of money matter. It is not true. And it could be untrue on many levels. It could be untrue that they're even a millionaire at all. It could be true that they have a million dollars in assets, but they also have 1.5 million in liabilities and they're negative 500 net worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How are we measuring that? So I worry about that because it just seems like this unnecessary flex. Like, why would you tell anyone except for like your partner and maybe like one other person? Like, why would you tell them what your net worth is? Like, what's the purpose? Yeah. I don't know. Makes sense. Yeah, I see a lot of, I watch a lot of finance YouTubers and stuff like that. Um, my favorite one is Austin Thompson. You guys should go check that one out. Uh, he's very good. Um, uh, but yeah, like I'll see a lot of YouTube YouTubers and I will look at the thumbnail and it'll be like, you know, my, uh, yeah, how I make $15,000 a day or something like that. Something crazy. Uh, it's, just... it's a lot of money. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just threw a number out. I don't know. If, I, I don't know if that's what people are saying on YouTube, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's just like, yeah. They, what it really is like the alternative and realistic like title of that YouTube video or in the style that you're talking about is like, you know, seven side hustle ideas, you know, that's, yeah. that's the better, better and less transparent option. But what it is, is like how I make this amount of money in a day. Um, yeah. It just seems like a flex and I don't yeah. think it ever pulls in the right type of person for the long term. Yeah assuming that someone's trying to help people by making that content that's not that's a poor assumption i guess you know yeah it's not a, it's not always a it's not always someone's trying to add something to the world oftentimes they're trying to add something to themselves so that's true build yeah. up their confidence yeah. yeah it's important i guess but probably not in that probably not in that way that way <laughs> that's my opinion of course though yes that's just a theory well how do you feel how do you feel channel. about it Talking about money? Yeah. I mean... Like, would you... So, a question. Would you reveal your net worth to people? Probably depends on the person. Would you reveal your net worth to more than 10 people that you know? Mm, I don't think so. As your net worth increases, would you decrease the amount of people you would tell? Maybe I don't know. I it, it it really depends on the person for me. Like I, I I brought it up as a thought experiment, but I definitely wouldn't want that as something that's like over top of my head for everybody to see. Are there a couple of like very very close friends that like if they you know we were having that conversation and for some reason it got real, we wanted to talk about that. Would I talk about it at after I got to a certain point? I don't know. Well, let's do this. If you and I were talking here, I'll, I'll say this. If you and I were talking and there was some, there was some benefit of us putting numbers on it because we were getting into something, you know, nitty gritty about finances and just sure. how to, how to run it. Then I would, if we talked for long enough, I would probably tell you the number and like the breakdown of things, you know? So, but I don't, so I don't think it's valuable to just like say, say like say it. Like no, why okay. why so, would I say that? Like and I've revealed more to you than probably any other like friend. So you know more about my situation, just you know, off camera, just our sure. text conversations and conversations in general, probably than any other friend that I have. Yeah. Because I know that like you're not I know you're not gonna like turn it into something that you can use as like a leverage piece or something right. or like try to get something out of me like I, I know for a fact that that's never gonna happen and if it did i'd be like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i i think i think my answer is at the low end it would be it would be that situation right it would be like very close friends that i know it wouldn't it couldn't be used against me and then at the higher end like when i'm at like a, like a much higher level it would be more so like I would tell friends that I know, like I have some kind of financial future with, right? Like whether it be starting a business or a company, uh, 
something along those lines or a spouse slash significant other or like family like that's probably who i would limit it down to um realistically speaking because like like you said i don't think there really is a point in telling people i don't think it's gonna add anything to them or to me and it could it could just be used against you so i would probably i'd fall into probably the same camp yeah and i think i think i'd take it maybe too far sometimes i guess because like i don't even tell i don't even tell people that i own a house like people that i haven't talked to in a few years like i don't even tell them that i'm I own property like I mean it, it goes I, it goes that far to where like I don't even I don't really want them to know that I have you know because now yeah I don't want them to know I have any assets yeah I just I just don't I'm, I'm worried about it being used against me I guess maybe unnecessarily well you chose maybe a I'm weird just... side hustle to be a finance youtuber then <laughs> well I don't I, and I don't have to reveal anything sure and that's that's the thing like maybe maybe I'm pigeonholing myself and I'm and I'm bucking myself over by not revealing things but there are successful finance youtubers uh who don't they don't reveal they'll say general ballpark numbers but like for their you know if their total total stock accounts are up five percent they'll only show that their stock accounts are up five they're not going to show the number because or they're not going to say I was up this much today. And then, you know, they're going to make sure that you can't do the math to figure out how much they're worth. It's probably, at least with the person I'm thinking about right now, I know it's multi-millions and that's super sick. That's great. But I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't want to know if he's worth a hundred mil or if he's worth three mil. It doesn't matter to me. The, the information he's spitting is valuable. And that's why I follow him because I can follow the logic that he's talking about. And it is, I'm learning things, you know, yeah. I'm seeing perspectives that I hadn't seen from anybody else. So it's the same thing with like, like Peter Lynch. Do I know Peter Lynch's net worth? Fuck no. I don't know. I don't know. He's a rich guy. He's, and even if he wasn't a rich guy and he lost it all, he would still be extremely valuable and I would still read his book, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, last thing in negotiations where, where you're getting people to pay you money for a service or good. I believe it is a leverage piece for someone else to know how much uh, you're worth in two ways. Uh, they might feel as though your rates are too low or they might feel as though your rates are too high. That's you don't a good need point. That money. That's yeah. a good point. They'll be like, you can cough up more. Like I know yeah. that right. you have mm -hmm. that, that ability and that's not, nope. that's not what it's about. I'm not about that. And then whenever you're being hired for something, well, you don't need that much, oh, you know, you, you got, it. yeah, she's <laughs> snuggling. Oh my God. Oh, she's yelling. I wonder if the mic's going to pick that up. Yeah. I hear it. <laughs> she's freaking out. Um, I think she's hungry. Yeah. Those are, I think those are all my thoughts though. I think I'm talking in circles now, but yeah. In negotiations, I think it could be used unnecessarily against somebody as well. And this could be uh, like a yearly, you know, yearly income that you make or net worth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I fall into the same camp and pretty much like all of what you're saying. And I think it is important to talk about strategy because I think, I don't know if you can learn from your friends and, I, I like the I like the diversity of knowledge. Like I, I think I've said before, like books by like the crate like the best like successful killers on the planet. Like it's so great. Like like rather than like focusing on like I'm gonna read all the books by this one person, you should read all books by all people because it's just like it's you just have now this big library of like thoughts and ideas and like solutions to problems that you can be like, oh, for this, I could pull this out just in case, you know what I mean? Um, I think that could be something that you can apply to like your conversations with friends too, of just like getting to know a little bit more about like how they look at things and how they plan for the future and stuff like that. But I don't think you have to give up the specific numbers for that to be the case. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think percentages work pretty well for most things. Percentages do work. Although it is- Because then you don't have to reveal yeah. the- number but it is an interesting thought experiment 
you know, what would that, what would the world look like and what would financial conversation look like if everybody knew everybody's income and net worth? It's interesting. I feel like it'd be a lot whinier. A lot whinier? It's possible. Oh, no. Yeah, whinier. Like, uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you froze a little bit. Whoops. Everything would be like Whoops. unionized if, if everyone knew everyone's income. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for damn sure. Everything would just be unionized. Yeah. Well, damn. That was good. That was a good conversation. That was good. That was good. Um, yeah. Should I wrap this thing up? You got a thought yeah, of the week? Yeah, we should wrap it up. Uh, let me think. You have a thought of the week. What's your thought of the week? Oh, um, was that your thought of the week? No. Okay. Something I think about sometimes, but it wasn't my thought of the week. <laughs> uh, my thought of this week was how um, sometimes I forget, at least for me, how beneficial writing things down is. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'll get in these anxious states where just like so many thoughts are happening in my brain, and then I'll like remember I can like oh I can like just write down things and like so much can happen just from that, whether it be like a schedule, a to do list, or just word vomiting. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. The other day I was just like, just a million thoughts were going on in my brain. And I was just like, oh my God, like, I don't know how to stop it. And then that thought was making it worse. And then like, I just put pen to paper for a little bit. And I was like, ah, oh, that's, things are a little bit quieter. I tend to think like the act of journaling, like a lot of people think like, a, like a lot of people create the habit of journaling like every day and stuff and stuff. For me, journaling is one of those like once in every little bit, like it's good to just get the thoughts out and then your yeah, brain's clear and open for more creative thinking and more logical thinking i normally end up <clears throat> journaling things whenever i'm like sad or i'm feeling negative i don't think sad is the right word just like feeling negative yeah so like i don't know maybe in the know, it's hard to yeah, it's hard to put a time, like a timeline on it, but I don't know. Once every five or six months, I'll just like fall into this weird like. I'm just like negative. Yeah. Like every every I have a negative lens on, and I don't know why. I'm sure it's always. Well, I was about to say I'm sure it's always different, but it's probably always the exact same series <laughs> of events that leads to the same thing, and I just haven't identified it yet, but best thing that can get me out of it is just writing shit down like this is good that's good this is good this is really good yeah that's good too and i'm like all right let me recognize how good my life is right now because i'm being really damn negative for no reason (laughs) and it's it's like not fair to the people that are around me so let me figure my shit out real quick and best way to do that is to just for me to sit just write things down yeah, like i i have a you know i have blah that's amazing not everyone has that i have x that's amazing not everyone has that i have this that's also amazing like i could be in a way worse situation than i'm in right now but i'm not so i need to get out of this little funk and stop feeling sorry for myself and on the other side of the coin i don't know about you but like writing down the thing that you think is negative and making your life worse tends to lessen the blow of it i guess for me like 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 i'll have like a thought in my head of like something's bad or like something is you know negatively affecting me and i'll write down like a statement that defines that thing and then i'll reread it and i'll be like well that's not that bad it's really not that bad or or it's irrational for me to think this because i objectively see it written on a page um people say it all the time when they're like frustrated or emotional <clears throat> and you try to like get them to speak and get them to like say what they're thinking and then they'll say right before they say it like what well, just sounds so stupid i'm about to say it and it's like that them noticing that and being able to say that right then probably fix the entire issue and the rest of the conversation is 100%. not useless but the rest of the conversation is the down come from from where they were yes so they've just realized like oh this is completely ridiculous and i'm being irrational and it's time to not be irrational anymore yes and yes. Yeah, being able to, you know, put the mirror up and look and be like, oh, that's silly that is the, the thing. Point. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was my thought this week because I 
wrote some stuff down. And I was just like, ah, I feel better. And so it worked. It worked. Yeah. It worked. I like writing things down. What about you? You got a thought of the week? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> if I did have a lot one. of thoughts. Was it the friend yeah. thing? Maybe it's the friend thing. No. Okay. That that would be that would be an honorable mention, but I think my thought <laughs> of the week is just that it's um very interesting to me how sickness spreads and that I think it's important for sickness to spread, unfortunately. Interesting. The flu specifically. <laughs> yeah. Am I frozen? Oh god. Yeah, you are frozen. Oh. What did you laugh? What's the last thing you heard? Uh sickness spreading. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sickness spreading is important, unfortunately. Yeah. And I just mean like, you know, the flu or the cold or whatever. Yeah. And I think we just had such an unfortunate situation over a year and a half span with all the masking and all that that no one like no one got sick. Yeah. And that's not that's not true. Like, but they didn't get sick nearly as much as they would have if they were in their regular situations. Like, yeah, maybe they got COVID, but they probably would have gotten the flu over the, that course of time. They probably would have gotten a cold or two over that course of time, or just like you know, just some random virus that they had to fight for two or three days. Yeah. But that just didn't happen. And now, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a teacher. So many people have the flu, bro. Like getting smacked in the face with sicknesses. Amount. Just getting slapped. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there's another one. Another five people are out. Dang. Another five. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. So crazy. and everyone's just coming back like, hey, flu gang. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like high school. <laughs> yeah. Flu gang, baby. I'm like, don't well, touch me. <laughs> stay away from those sick kids. <laughs> I can't, bro. I can't. <laughs> Even if I tried to, I would like I would literally forget, and I'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah what's up?" Like, you like dap them up, and you'll be like, "Damn it!" Yeah, I'm like, "No." So I've been trying to elbow. <laughs> I tried to elbow only for the, elbow the whole day, but I still fit. But, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah, that it's is tough. tough. Amazing. Anyway, yeah, that would be my that. thought of the week. Makes sense. Yeah. Word. So thanks, man. Yeah. Boost my ego up. <laughs> Oh, uh, right. home biotic link in the description. Patreon link in the description. True dark link in the description. Cloud music tweet link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> My YouTube channel link in the description. All right, I think that's all of them. Amazing. We'll have Sean's YouTube channel soon once he makes one. So <laughs> we'll see. Yes, yes, one of those. Uh, not today though. Not, not today. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment. We read yes. comments. All of we them. do. So we do. Awesome. All right, guys. It's been your best friends. It's Austin and Sean. We love you.